Well, hey there, friends, and welcome to another tutorial on how to make changes to your WordPress website. Today, we're going to look at WooCommerce, and specifically, we're going to look at how to make changes to products. And we're going to go here first in our left-hand navigation. Uh, we're assuming that you've logged into WordPress. Your dashboard will probably look a little different, but bottom line, you have your left-hand navigation. And you'll see WooCommerce here, and right below that is products. So you can click on all products. And on this particular site, you'll see that we have lots of products. In fact, we have 76 of them. Some of them are being used now. Some of them will be used later. But what we're going to do is we're going to edit. Now, here's a quick note on a great speed tip. If you are editing a bunch of products at the same time, I highly recommend having one main screen open that has all your products. And then you can right click or you can hold down command and click with a Mac, or I think it's control and click with a PC. Open your link in a new tab, then do the next one, then do the next one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna open all of the links in this particular category. And I know it's the same category because they have the same type of, <laughs> uh, of image. So <clears throat> by doing that, you're gonna allow yourself to do two things. Number one, you'll stay organized whether it's uh, by category or whether you just do five at a time or 10 at a time, you need to make sure you have a good organization system so that you don't lose your place. And the second thing is that lets you crank things out quickly. So uh, this is what a product editing screen looks like. Now, if we were going to add a new product, you could click add new here. You could click add new on the left. You could click add new up here. There's a bunch of places we could do that. And I'll show you that in a few minutes. But first, let me just show you the editing. This is your area to put information about the product if you have a lot of information. If you have less information, you can put it in the short description. So you'll notice on this product, we have a short description here, and that's enough for our needs. You'll notice there's a product image, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. Uh, but this is really where the meat of your information is in WooCommerce. It's the product data box. Now, depending on what other plugins you have installed on your site, you might have more stuff here. This is a Yoast SEO plugin. Uh, but the bottom line is just scroll until you see the product data box. Now, here you'll see there's the price. So if you need to change the price, you can do that. If you want to put something on sale, you can do that here. You can set a schedule for when you want sales to go live and when you want them to turn off. Inventory is really important. Now, on these particular products, we don't have a SKU. So I happen to know that the people who are part of this website are also watching this video. So please make sure and put a SKU number in. I don't know all of the internal SKUs for that company, uh, but you can put your own SKU number there. If you're making uh, this your website, if you're doing your own online store, a SKU is really handy. If you also sell things uh, not on your website, it helps you manage your inventory, which by the way, you can also uh, use the stock status dropdown to choose uh, the current status of your stock. That's in the inventory tab here in the product data box on the product edit screen. So edit product screen, product data box, inventory tab. Then we go to the shipping tab. And this is exceptionally important because if you don't get these numbers right, then the shipping calculations will be wrong. Uh, the weight is right here. Pay special attention to how you are measuring things. Uh, if you're in the U.S., obviously pounds are our thing. But notice the dimensions. Uh, in some versions uh, of people's websites, they track things in feet, maybe even centimeters or other things. This website is tracking in inches. So make sure that you are entering values in inches. So for instance, this is a five-foot height roll of screen. Uh, five-foot height, that's 60 inches. So you have to make sure and have it there. The other thing to keep in mind is you can put your mouse on top of these little question marks and get more info. This particular box, the dimensions box, is laid out as length and width and height. Now, for a roll of screen, if it's rolled up, you can see it's only six inches long, six inches wide. Obviously, with three-dimensional objects, sometimes it's a little tricky. What's the length and what's the height and what's the width? Just be consistent. That's the main thing, is be consistent across your site on which things are labeled uh, you know, length, width, and height. So in this case, this is 60 inches in height because that's how we're referring to this product. This is a five foot height or a 60 inch height roll of screen. So make sure you put your data there, your information in the right measurements and you put them in the right place. Now, 
You can add a shipping class here uh, if you wanted to sort stuff. That's really more of an internal labeling thing. Don't worry too much about that. But I did want to show you something else uh, that will come into play for some products. Uh, and that is what's called the measurement. Now this is specific for a plugin that we've installed called Shipping Measurement Calculator. Uh, if I remember right, I might get that product wrong. But anyway, um, I'll check it in. You know, let's just check it now. We could check it in a minute, but we'll just check it now. So in fact, I'm going to go ahead and go to my plugins, getting a crash course in basic WooCommerce operation. And we're going to scroll down, look for WooCommerce uh, measurement price calculator. There it is. This is a great plugin that lets you calculate things by the foot, by the cubic inch, cube, whatever. There's lots of different ways to calculate stuff. That's beyond the scope of this tutorial. But just know that if you do not have the WooCommerce measurement price calculator installed, then you will not have this measurement box on the bottom. That said, if you do have that installed, you will have the measurement. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make changes with that. Uh, here we go. Here's screen by the foot. This is a four foot high piece of screen. Notice that the price is different here. If you were to go back, uh, if we were to go back over here and we're going to say, uh, here's a four foot high roll of screen. This is a hundred foot roll, hundred foot roll, four feet high. Look at our information. That's $190. Well, guess what? If you're doing it by the foot, then it's 275 per foot. How do you make that change? Well, that's what you use this measurement tab for. So let's go ahead and click on this. And you'll notice that there's several different items. Now I'm going to walk you through how this is set up. Uh, if you do get the WooCommerce uh, measurement price calculator, obviously look at their documentation and their tutorials because they are the experts. I'm just here to help you get a little head start uh, if you're just making some basic edits. Now on the measurement price calculator tab, you'll notice a few things. Uh, you can choose what kind of measurement you want to take or how you want to calculate. So in this case, we're doing dimensions. Uh, there's other ways you could do it, but we're doing dimensions. You want to check this box to display product pricing per foot on the front end. What that means is this is going to replace the standard WooCommerce uh, information. In fact, I'll go ahead and show you this. Open that. And here is that 100 foot roll. All right. So if you're looking at just a roll of screen, uh, a single product that you're not having to map out by the foot or quote out by the foot, You'll notice that it's taking a moment. There we go. Uh, this just says add to cart. And that's pretty much it. You can add it to your cart. Um, but if you have it by the foot, there's this option here where you can decide the desired length. And so that's going to be really important to keep in mind. This box will show up, desired length, that will show up if you select this checks box check box right here check this box to def no wait wrong one there we go check this box to display product pricing per unit on the front end so make sure this box is checked you can tell it uh how you want the label to show so on the front here this is 275 per foot you know i could change this 275 per pickle if i wanted to just you know i can put whatever you want there uh you save that Anytime you save a WooCommerce product, you want to make sure the screen refreshes and you get your green product updated note, right? So here you go, 275 per pickle. Apparently we're measuring screen in terms of pickles, which obviously is not correct, but you can make this say whatever you want. So there's by the foot. Uh, this is your pricing unit. Notice this is just what you taught, what you say about it on the front end. This is how it's calculated in the back end. So this is important. You want to make sure calculated price is checked because you're going to define the product pricing per unit and allow customers to provide custom measurements. This says, hey, let them type in how much they want and we will calculate it for them. Finally, check this box to define the product weight per unit and calculate the weight based on the product dimension. So what that means is, remember back up in the shipping area, we have the ability to define how heavy stuff is and what the dimensions are. Well, pounds per foot, we're putting this down at 0.21 pounds per foot of screen. Uh, now, that may or may not be correct. This is for the client to actually go through, and they need to double check all these measurements because it's their stuff. Uh, but this is where you would store that information. And if you want to add up how many feet they have and figure out how heavy all of it is, 
you need to put in a value here that will accommodate that. Uh, and then make sure the box is checked, calculated weight. You can add a little extra. If you want to add a little bit of extra uh, here, you'll, you'll notice um, if you, it tells you what it does. If you need to add and charge for a cut and overage, enter the percentage of the total measurement to use. So you can do a 2% increase in the overage um, just to charge a little extra to accommodate for anything you need to accommodate for. All right, uh, the length option here is to select this to display the product length in the price calculator. Um, this is the desired length. So again, that's what they're tracking. Uh, they wanna say how long they want their roll of screen. This is measured in feet. Uh, you want this to be checked and you want to accept free form customer input. That means they can just type whatever they want. They don't have to select from a pre-chosen list of options. And you'll notice here, length, you could change it to accept width or height, but in this case, what we want is length. And so that's what we've decided to accept. So there you go. There's kind of the overview on how this works. Uh, when you're editing products, you need to make sure that you have a SKU in here, which will need to be added later in this case. You need to make sure your shipping information is accurate. In this case, this is a product that's calculated by foot, so we have the amount of weight per foot, not the total weight of the roll. If you're on a product that is a single product that you sell, then you can put that, and it's a total weight, and this is 25 pounds for this particular object. So hopefully that gives you a good overview. Uh, and lastly, I'm just gonna hit add new and show you the highlights on what you need to do to add a new product. So when you hit add new, everything is blank. So we're just gonna call this a pickle basket. Um, we could add something in this big description area. Instead, we're just gonna add it here. This is a, bas is a mesh basket for pickles. And this is a staging site, it's not a live site, so uh, otherwise you don't wanna be doing stuff like this. All right, we're gonna sell this for $49 because it's a really nice basket. Inventory, we're gonna call it PCKLBSKT. That's just our internal SKU number. Um, we're actually going to, we're not entering in values. You could put values in here and count up all your stock. And then, you know, this WooCommerce system will track how much stock you have left. But if you're also selling products elsewhere, like over the phone or through a catalog or anywhere else in person, um, that's really tricky because this is only gonna track things that are sold on the website. So in this case, we're not enabling the stock management at the product level but we will let you decide uh, whether it's out of stock, on back order, or whatever you choose. In the shipping, let's say this is a one pound basket, and this is in inches, so this is 12 inches by 12 inches, and it's uh, you know 30 inches deep. It's a really deep basket. And that's all the information we need there. We're not measuring it. We're not you know getting measurement by weight or volume. That's not relevant here. Uh, and then finally, you want to add a product image. Now, there's two image areas here. You could add a gallery of a lot of images, but you want to always start with your product image here. So clicking the Set Product Image button, or the link, opens up your media library. And if you've already added a photo in your media library, you can select the one you want. If you have not already added a photo in your media library, then all you need to do is go to uh, wherever you have... Uh, let's see, what do we have here? Oh, there we go. You can just pick an image, drag it over from your desktop. You know, if you're using Mac, it's from the Finder. If you're using Windows, it's from Windows Explorer. Drag it over, let go, and you notice that it uploads. And in just a moment, it will refresh and show you that the image has been uploaded successfully. Ta-da! Shows you a little picture there, and you can set the product image. Now, when someone looks at this product in the store, it will show them this image and then uh, that's how they do it. Finally, uh, pick out your product categories. So uh, this obviously is not any one of these categories, so we're gonna click on Categorized, and then you can publish this. So we're gonna go ahead and publish this product, and we're gonna view the product. Click on that link there, and look at this. This is a pickle basket, $49. You can add it to your cart. Here's the picture. Obviously, we're gonna go delete this now but now you know how to add a product to your WooCommerce online store. Now, one last note, and this is an important one. What we just did was add what's called a simple product. 
A simple product is just what it sounds like. It's simple. One price, one product, that's it. There is an option to add what's called a variable product. And this is where if you have the type of product that comes with different options, then you would choose a variable product and you would add some attributes, you'd add some variations, and uh, we have other, there's other tutorials out there. You can just go search for how to add a variable product in WooCommerce and you can learn more about that. But just keep in mind those are different. All right, that concludes our tutorial and I am going to move this pickle basket to the trash because we're not actually selling pickle baskets. And if you have any feedback or needs, just let us know and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.